Hello, my beautiful people. My name is Osonato. Welcome to another episode of Basic Nigerian History. Let's get started. Last episode, we discussed how Okwiki became the one thing Nigerian depended on and the mostly negative effects it had on the country as a whole. We also learned about how Gowan's military government wasted, mismanaged, and swindled all the funds from the oil revenue. This episode, we're going to talk about the third military coup that took place in Nigeria. So, where we left off previously was when everyone had lost all respect for Yakubu Gowan, especially after the events of the Cement Amada. On the 29th of July 1975, Colonel Joseph Gaba who was Gowan's chief of security and Lieutenant Musa Yadua staged a bloodless coup, accusing Gowan of corruption and delaying the return to civilian rule. They elected a governor by the name of General Murtala Mohammed, a military hero from the civil war. He was to lead and this was the beginning of Nigeria's third coup. This coup was hailed by Nigerians as the beginning of a new and more honest government. Mutala Mohammed began initiating efforts. He retired all of Gowan's high ranking military officials and replaced them with fresh faces. He also retired or dismissed 11,000 civil servants for malfeasance and ineptitude. The civil service had ballooned and become a cesspool of corruption, poor performance, with low to absolutely no productivity. He also purged police and judiciary sectors of corrupt individuals, and four vice chancellors of universities were retired. He then promised to return to civilian rule by the 1st of October 1979. Everybody was like, okay, maybe now we will turn things around. In the same year, Mohammed also initiated a constitution drafting committee known as the CDC. The other African nations also believed that Nigeria was finally getting their act together because after much reluctance, the Francophone West African countries eventually agreed to join a West African economic community and 15 West African states agreed to form ECOWAS in 1975. The aim was to foster economic integration by standardizing tariffs, facilitating movement of people, goods, and capital across the borders and allowing them to become more unified and negotiate from a powerful position with the EEC, who was the European Economic Community. Since the inception of ECOWAS, Nigeria as the largest and wealthiest state has contributed roughly one third of all funds used in ECOWAS. ECOWAS has been seen as a foreign policy triumph for Nigeria, but it didn't break ties between member countries and European trade partners like Nigeria had hoped. Most of the African states remained heavily indebted to the Western business, and even Nigeria would eventually be indebted. Nigeria also began using oil as economic assistance to its fellow African states, selling oil directly to other African countries at three quarters the market price on two conditions. One, that the purchasing country had its own refineries and two, that the country promised not to resell the oil to a third party. A military decree in 1975 that oil workers could be imprisoned for 21 years or executed for striking was put in place. In 1976, Muhammad began the process of moving federal capital territory of Nigeria to Abuja in order to make it an area governed by the government alone and therefore owned by all Nigerians. Also, he felt Lagos was too crowded and too much in the West. This move was eventually completed in 1991 but the government was criticized of actually keeping Nigerians out of the FCT instead of welcoming them in. In the same year, Mohammed also announced a decree making it illegal for anyone to bring false accusation of corruption or mismanagement against government officials. On the 13th of February 1976, Mutala Mohammed was assassinated by Buka Suka Dimka with the help of Yakubu Gowan. Buka implicated him in the testimony in another coup attempt. Side note, this Buka guy also took part in the coup of Iwansi, the first ever coup. It's almost like he just loves doing this rubbish. In fact, they all do. And this Yakubu Gowan is so annoying. They overthrow him in a bloodless coup and don't kill him, yet he still plots to assassinate others. If they had killed him now, people would say, hey, yeah, it's unfair, but look what he did because they left him alive. Anyways, the coup was crushed. They weren't successful and Murutala's chief of staff, Lieutenant Olusegun Obasanjo, 
who had also distinguished himself in the civil war, became head of state. He simply continued the initiatives that Mohammed had already put in place. The goal remained to root out corruption, promote national unity, and transition to civilian rule. Obasanjo also continued the foreign policy Gowon had started and even intensified it, becoming more radicalized and often in direct confrontation with Western powers like the UK and the USA. He also continued the tradition of donating money to the other African countries, giving drought relief funds to Ethiopia, Chad, Mali, and other economic assistance to Cameroon, Sudan, Zambia, and the Gambia, as well as technical assistance to Algeria, Botswana, the Gambia, and Swaziland. Nigeria also offered scholarships to students from other African countries to come and study in Nigeria. We funded bilateral projects in other African countries and contributed approximately $80 million to the establishment of the African Development Bank, to which African countries could apply for loans at generous rates. All of Muta and Obasanjo's regime's efforts to stop corruption were unsuccessful because the new individuals just took up where the old people left off. It was the rent-seeking rentier state system that needed changing. Why would you be good and do what you're supposed to do for the nation when at the end of the day, you don't need the people's help? All you need is the money of foreigners. The new guys that Mohammed and Obasanjo put in place just took advantage of the same corrupt systems that the previous guys were using. In their efforts to achieve unity, the Mohammed Obasanjo regime were also unsuccessful. Their plan was to make even more states. In the year of 1976, Nigeria was split into 19 states. The creation of more states was supposed to mean greater political and economic power for those minorities in their own states. So that way, everyone can equally get a share of Nigerian wealth and everyone can be happy. But of course, other minorities also wanted their own states. Furthermore, there was the problems of more states being created in the West, which meant already rich states could also get richer. In the same year, there was also a scathing report showing the mismanagement of funds for Festang, the festival of black arts and culture. As we know, Goan blew money on the preparations of Festang. Mohammed had delayed the festivities and scaled back the project, but it was still pretty incredible. In 1977, Nigeria hosted Festang 77, an international festival of black and African arts and culture. The idea was to showcase traditional cultures and facilitate discussion amongst the greatest African minds. It happened mainly in the National Theatre, which was a round structure of 23,000 square meters and 31 meters tall, costing an estimated 144 million naira. It was equipped with most up-to-date technologies, including the 33 by 44 meter rotating stage and extravagant lighting system, operated by remote control, a closed circus TV system, a 5,000 seat gallery where each seat had earphones equipped for simultaneous translation of eight major languages. The theater was surrounded by a 5,000 unit housing complex known as Festac Village, built in modernist European style architecture to accommodate accommodate the international participants and eight of Africa's head of states. There were traditional theatrical and dance performances presented by Nigerian troops that had won the honor by competing in local and state competitions. They also had conferences of black scholars on issues relevant to the black and African world. It was a spectacular display meant to show Nigerian wealth and power and place Nigeria as the leader of black Africa. It was supposed to bring pride to Nigerians, but it all came at a price though. And when the investigation was conducted into Festac at the behest of Mutala Mohammed before he was killed, trails of Gowan's woeful mismanagement and corruption in Nigeria was found. Many contracts for construction and supplies had been grossly inflated, like the cement armada. Many companies got paid millions of naira for work that was never done. And some companies did shoddy bad quality work. For example, the Bulgarian firm Techno Expo Troy received over 12.6 million naira in excess profits over and above what was mentioned in the contract, including 403,000 naira for redundant surveying. Not only that, but they built access road that sank because the land on which they built it on had not been properly drained. 
First stack officials themselves were receiving bribes from the contracts in the form of commission and living lavishly on federal money. They were staying in super expensive hotels on first stack trips and flying first class. The supervisor of the project, Al Haji Umaru Diko, awarded contracts to companies where contractors never even visited the sites afterwards. Diko also used first stack money to fund his own private property. First stack officials were all allocated cars that were just eventually given to them as gifts. Festac became a symbol of extravagance and corruption, as well as the growing rift between those with access to the state's resources and those whom the state had ignored. Let's keep in mind that whilst all these huge amounts of money were being banded about, this was during the time when the Naira actually had a lot of value. And let's stop it there for this episode. Let me just give you guys a recap of what we learned. What we learned in this episode was what happened after everybody realized that Yakubu Gowan was a useless leader and eventually he got overthrown by Muitala Mohammed and Olusegun Obasanjo. Muitala Mohammed was then assassinated by this Sukabuka Dimkadud. He just likes to do assassinations left, right and center. He likes to do coups. He likes to do overthrowing. I don't know what is wrong with him. He must have some screws in his brain. Anyways, that coup was crushed and aborted and Olusheng Mbasojo continued Mutala Mohammed's plans. Stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to teach you more about Nigerian history. We're going to continue on this timeline and you're going to see what comes next. Guys, don't forget to like, comment and most importantly, don't forget to subscribe. If you're watching us, please subscribe. Also, if you would like to support us, the link to the Patreon is in the description below. So go ahead and click on that and pledge however much you would like to pledge and however much you can. That's right. I love you. I'm out.